from the butt, like the cloaca end. Sunday, January 1st, New Year's. These, all the zip ties and wire I took off. These, all the zip tie and wire that I just picked up randomly in that back corner that you saw yesterday, crazy. Very nice, out here in a t-shirt, nice and warm. Here's that gate, I'm gonna get another one put here. That way I can let the turkeys out on their own without chickens. I'm gonna get that other run of wire put up there so the dogs can get all the way around these pins. They can, they just can't go around. They have to walk back to get there. Got some wood chips to put down and uh, then we'll see what else I end up doing for New Year's. So I'm out here in this upper coop pulling eggs. This is where the chickens come in and sleep at night. It's all open air, so there's no humidity really in here. So they don't get any hypothermia. They sit high, bundle up, get really close to each other, and they stay warm. And then during the day, they go out into the sunlight. Or if it's really cold, they just kind of stay in here or hit one of these other coops. We built a wall of straw all around these this year just to keep wind out, kind of help, uh, you know, maybe a little warm. I don't, I don't notice it being any warmer when you're in here. When the chickens are in here, they are. Uh, it is warmer. But we have cattle panel right there dividing the pens, and this coop is backed up to that right there. And every now and then, We've had a duck get in here and wedge his way in. And I come in this morning and there's this right here. And this chicken got in here. I don't know, maybe right here, because these upper holes, these are combo panels. They're real close down there. They're like an inch and a half. And then they go like three inches. And then up here, they get four inches. And the chickens can fit through there. Well, she got in there, or maybe she got in from over there. I, I, most likely here. And she got up there high enough or up on the outside Maybe she got in there, but I don't think so. It's wide here, but as it goes down, it gets a little tighter. And she was trying to get through that fence probably. And you can see she's, she's dead there. And what happened is the chickens in here picked her to death. Anytime they see any weakness, the chickens will pick that other animal to death. They will literally eat it alive. And that's the difference between the animal kingdom and human beings. We take every little thing and we keep it alive. And I understand compassion, or if it's your family, or whatever it is, right? But we are so worried all the time about keeping everything alive. When Mother Nature would kill you, and me, and all of us in a heartbeat. And I guess that's the difference between us and Mother Nature, right? We can master Mother Nature, as long as there's a lot of us. But you put yourselves out in the wilderness, and usually one by one, that society, gets picked off by mother nature, depending on the society, right? But there's nothing in the world here that's gonna keep these animals alive other than you and their strength. As Soon as they show weakness, that thing is done for. Like I was just in here right when I walked in, this hen was over there picking at that hen. You ever see a, um, a hen when they get weak or if they have a little prolapse, the other hens will eat that other hen from the butt, like the cloaca end, and you can literally You'll, you'll walk out sometimes and there'll be a trail of blood and you're like, what is that? And it will lead you to a chicken. Now the chickens are pretty strong. I've had a chicken like that a couple of times. And I'll take them, if you put them with the other chickens, the other chickens will literally eat them alive. By the time you find them, the chicken will be moving around and the whole ass end of the bird will be eaten out. Um, with that said, chickens are very, very resilient also. I've taken a couple of those chickens and put them in the rabbit house and those chickens actually heal up, amazingly, within a few weeks healed up and start laying eggs again. So that goes to another thing too, right? People all the time I see in all these groups are like, my chicken is bleeding and people are like, vet, this med, this antibiotic, all this stuff, this, that, this, and the other. I've never given those chickens any antibiotics, any medication, I mean nothing. I put them in an area where they have some wind block where they can get out of the element and they make it or they don't make it but it's those inputs. You have to look at this stuff as a, uh, if you look at it as a business, what does that cost, right? What does that chicken cost? I have way more chickens than I need. So when things happen, 
or if something came down and ate them, in the, if we got an owl in a pen or something. Owls never happened here. Hawks have come down years ago. The dogs take care of hawks. The dogs scare everything off that comes in here. I caught one possum inside here and it was hiding in a corner and I took it and I let the possum go. We've never had a raccoon in here, foxes. They're all over on the outside. There's game cameras. If you see this tree line here, you can see this fence here. And you see back there, there's another fence over there, about 20 feet away. There's game cameras all up and down that corridor. That trail runs all the way to the back edge of the property. And then there's a trail behind that also. Coyotes walk right up here every night. Foxes, raccoons, everything. But they never cross through, and they could. They could walk right through that four by four wire right there. They don't, because those dogs take care of everything. So, the animal kingdom kills its weak dogs will protect your animals from predators, but the dogs won't protect the animals from their own animals of their own kind. It's always its own kind that gets them because some animal has a weakness. It's what always happens. Enough of that. I am back to actually turning this camera off and just getting a bunch of stuff done. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this bird out of here. Not sure what kind of bird that is. We got a bunch of these this year. I'm guessing it was a something out of tractor supply we buy quite a bit of birds out of tractor supply and uh, these light color ones tend to go broody if you want to hatch out babies I don't know if we, YouTube's weird they literally ate it down to the skull eyeballs are still there ants haven't even gotten to it yet uh, the chickens ate its own kind its own people ate it we won't waste this had they got to the uh, butthole end they'd ate everything they'll literally pull the guts out of it and eat the entire uh, all the organs and everything when you find it it will be like um getting a uh, whole chicken from the grocery store it just still has its feathers wings and feet on it but they've eaten all the innards out of it if, if they can get to it this here, we'll just give this to a dog and uh, the dog will eat it up. And people are like, oh my God, that makes them chase your birds. Now nah, we put them in a kennel with them. We've not had that problem, not an issue. And that, that dead bird right there, I was out here last night at 8.30. I was in that coop between 8 and 8.30. That bird wasn't there. That happened in the last 12 hours here. Another part of dividing these chicken pens into smaller areas and locking them up is so that the chickens can't get out. Now, some of them can fly. We'll do something different with that set of birds. If you take baby chicks and you can find them in a space, they'll live in the space all their life. If you take baby chicks and let them grow up and they know freedom and know what it is to run around this entire property, you'll have a hard time keeping them in a smaller area once they realize that, once they've tasted freedom. But what happens is I come out here and I put dog food in these three bowls. Through the winter, we're feeding a little bit more kibble. We're still feeding a lot of raw. In the summer, it's mostly raw. But when we feed kibble, all these birds would rather have dog food than their chicken feed. Like literally, we could put chicken food in dog food, they'll eat the dog food. There's chicken feed in all these pens. I just fed them. There's food still in the troughs right now, but these birds are out here after this dog food. The most expensive feed we get is the dog food. And if, you're, if your dogs are walking away from their feed and not eating it, we just take it away. I stack it up and before I leave, in another, in 30 minutes or whatever, I'll offer it to them. And if not, I'll offer it they get to eat tonight. My dogs, are big huge and uh they, there's no feed problem with these animals but if i leave a whole bowl of feed like this female right here the fluffy one she wants to eat in the dark always i gave her some eggs i had some dirty eggs she won't eat the shells that one eats the shells the chickens will come over here and eat those shells up but she eats in the at night she eats less than these other two dogs do and those two dogs there sisters same litter same age but that other dog always wants to eat the big fluffy one feeding she is never excited to eat tells me she's probably these birds are laying eggs some i have so many birds we could probably stop feeding these dogs they would lose weight but they would be fine the other thing you'll see happen too if you're not feeding your dog enough you'll have them eating other animals that will happen when they get hungry